Hey everybody, thanks for watching Arkansas Gun Guy. Today, the Beretta PX4 Storm Full Size. This is my first Beretta. I'd always assumed my first Beretta would be one of the 92 models, the M9 military guys, uh, because I like a metal frame, double action, single action uh, firearm. Uh, I just never got around to picking one up. And uh, just wasn't on my radar uh, at all to get a Beretta. And actually this gun, the PX4 Storm, wasn't on my radar at all. I knew nothing about it. Uh, no one talked about it. No one writes about it. Came out in 2005, and I don't know if there was any fanfare or not. Uh, the most famous thing I knew about this firearm is that it was Cobb's Weapon in Inception, one of my favorite movies. So it's kind of cool to have one of the uh, firearms from that movie, but didn't know anything about it. Uh, started learning about it recently. Uh, became fascinated with the um, couple things. Supposedly it has this epic reliability. Uh, there's tons of tests from Breda and Langdon Tactical with hundreds of thousands of rounds and no failures through these guns. So love that. Uh, it also has a super innovative recoil reduction system. Instead of the uh, standard browning tilting barrel where the slide or the uh, barrel comes back and tilts up causing muzzle flip like this, this barrel rotates or comes straight back and rotates. So the slide is just going back or the barrel is just going back and forward no flipping or no dropping, making it up and down. So I was very curious how that worked. And also I've heard the triggers are really good on these. So never held one, had never even seen one. Uh, but as I read more about it, uh, it's like the gods were watching me. I went to my local gun store and for the first time in ever, uh, they had one in stock. Picked it up, felt phenomenal. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted a full size or a compact carry. This again is the full size and it fits my person really well, so I like the full-size version. Uh, felt good, look, looked great, price was good, uh, but the trigger is what I wasn't sure about. I had read about Langdon Tactical, sending these guns there or buying the guns directly from them for a premium with uh, lots of added features, which are all great, but they're supposed, to, they're supposed to have an epic trigger, trigger from the heavens on the Langdons. So I thought, maybe this trigger is not that great, you have to send there to make it good. I tested this trigger out, it's stunning how good this trigger is. I can't imagine how good the trigger from Langdon will be. Uh, probably one day I will send one to him to have one done because this is good. I can't imagine better. So we'll take a look at, a close-up look at the Beretta PX4 Storm full size. I'll show you all the details, all the good and bad. Uh, after that, I'll probably have some follow-up videos because I can't wait to shoot this guy just to see how the recoil works on it. Uh, super excited for my first Beretta and here I'll flip over for close-ups of the guy. Uh, Thank you again for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. If you haven't, would you like and subscribe? I'm just trying to grow my little channel and I appreciate all the help I can get. Thanks. All right, so here's a close up of the PX4 Storm full size from Beretta. Um, I'll do kind of an unconventional unboxing, set this aside for just a second and show you what came in the box as I've obviously already taken it out of the box. And interesting, again, this is my first Beretta. I didn't know that the Beretta boxes came in a separate box. So I have lots of boxes that say Beretta on there. Uh, so they come in a cardboard box. Um, the plastic box comes in a cardboard box. And then you have your Beretta logo, made in Italy. That's pretty much it. Inside, some interesting stuff inside here. Um, the gun came wrapped in this paper, which is nice to keep any grease uh, from getting down into the foam. Uh, it comes with three back straps, one on the firearm, and then a small option and a, a large option with the beaver tail. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll try these out or not. I've heard they're kind of hard to, to change. I'll take a look and see. Comes with this pretty cool parts bit, which I'll just leave on my desk here for future use. Uh, again, two magazines, two 17 round magazines and a speed loader. Um, metal magazines made in Italy. Probably know who those are. Uh, comes with a branded Breda lock. Interesting, something nice just to keep in my closet. Uh, comes with all the um, literature. I found it very interesting that the instruction manual starts in Italian. I actually love that. More authentic. Uh, and it comes with a nice cleaning kit. So set this out for later. So that's what's in the box, but you really probably came to see the gun, not the box. So here we are. PX4 Storm full size. Okay, my understanding, this was Beretta's first polymer frame gun brought to market. Uh, it was introduced back in 2005. I'm not sure to what degree of fanfare uh, it received. I don't read much about it these days. I just, you know, it wasn't on my radar at all. Uh, but I'll tell you, once you dig deeper and learn more about it, you'll find that this gun has a pretty loyal cult following. 
I think just because a, it's a pretty cool looking gun, but also the fact that it has just such an epic reliability record and super innovative design. So there's a lot of cool things about this gun that I think most people don't know about. And I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with this guy just to learn how he shoots. Uh, let me do all the boring specs first. Again, this gun came out in 2005. I think it was originally designed uh, to around the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge. That was all the rage at the time in the late 90s. Uh, it's also available in 9mm, as you see here, as well as 45 ACP. Now, the 45 comes in the FDE or Coyote type finish, uh, but multiple calibers available in this pretty cool looking firearm. Uh, now, this is, again, the full-size version. They make a compact and a subcompact. You'll note that the subcompact does not have the very cool rotating bar barrel. It's just got the standard uh, Browning tilting design. Uh, so that's the only difference in the subcompact versus the compact and the full size. They also make a compact carry version, which has the full size grip like you have here and the shorter barrel. So right now I've got the full size. This one feels great to me, it fits my hand. I'm tall enough and long enough that I could probably carry this thing if I really wanted to. Um, but that's the kind of the history of it. Lengthwise, this guy's 7.6 inches long with a four inch barrel. Uh, Heightwise, it's 5.5 inches. And widthwise, the number is 1.4, but I think most of that comes from these two giant ears here from the safety slash decockers. Uh, you will learn that these are super controversial and uh, people love to have an opinion about these things. And you can kind of see why, uh, because they do stick out probably too much. I'll tell you now, there is a super uh, uh, sleek uh, version that, that puts them right against the frame. And once you do that, you don't have this protrusion, but then people complain that they are too hard to decock. So uh, I don't think you can make everybody happy all the time. So you know, this is what you got right now. I'm gonna live with it for now and see how it goes. Um, again, a beautiful, beautiful firearm. Just looking at it front to back. You can see that four inch barrel protruding slightly from the slide here. Up top, you've got standard three dot sight set up. Kind of, you all know what that looks like probably. Um, loaded chamber indicator here, I believe. And lots of little nicks on the frame for a brand new gun. I have read that Beretta's finish isn't maybe all that. And again, brand new gun, other than just being in my hands a little bit, it's got lots of nicks already, which is fine. It's gonna get beat to death as I shoot it probably. Um, you've got front and rear cocking serrations, which is nice because again, if you're used to cocking back here, there's a good chance you could, you know, pop off or slide and, you know, scratch your finger pretty heavily or just get hurt uh, as opposed to running up front much easier to run it from the front. Uh, we'll do a safety check since the magazine's still in here. Mag is there. Weapon is empty. So and I'll decock it now. So again, I like um, I like the front cocking stations, but again, any of them work, front or back. Uh, it's just nice to have the option, and they are pretty grippable. Uh, up front, you've got just a standard, uh, just a one pick rail which seems kind of odd to me. I thought there'd be more room for a full pick rail there or a longer one. I assume that works. I've just never seen a single pick rail before. Uh, you've got your takedown levers on each side. Uh, and on the left-hand side of the firearm, you have your slide stop, slide catch, not one on the right-hand side. The only AMB feature here is the decocker and safety. You've got your magazine release here, protrudes nicely, pretty easy to, uh, Get your thumb on. I'll tell you there's also lots of questions or comments or options for this guy as well to make it uh, more pronounced if you, if you want that. This one seems to work fine for me. The other super controversial thing about this firearm that I've read are the grips. Most people don't like the fact that the sides are so slick. Looks phenomenal, but hey, it is slick. But I'll tell you with you know, the shape under the cut, the undercut here, slight beaver tail, if you get a purchase like this, I have plenty of traction with these front, uh, these front stiplings here and the back strap, uh, which again comes in small, medium, and large. This is the medium. I have what seems to be plenty of traction. You know, maybe if I'm working all day and my hands are sweaty, I'm in the mud, maybe it's going to slide, but it sure doesn't feel like it. There's plenty of traction available on the front strap and back strap. In my humble opinion, having never shot the firearm before, but people do talk about that a lot. 
Uh, and the other thing to talk about is this decocker up here. So you can see now the pistol is in the cocked position and ready to fire with the red dot. Uh, this is both the safety and decocker. So you pull this down to decock it and it also puts it in safe mode. No more red dot and the trigger is dead. Uh, the only way to uh, you know, turn it back on now is turn the safety back up. Again, opposite of what you've probably always done before, which is down to shoot. Now it's up to shoot. And now that this is back in the up position, you're back in full double action. Uh, you can cock the firearm, but you cannot put it in safety. You can't carry it cocked and locked uh, because if you try to put it in safe mode, it decocks it every time. So uh, I actually prefer that as well because I want to carry it with one in the chamber and hammer down with a heavy double action pull the first time. Uh, it is also worth noting that if you try to rack the slide while it's in safe, normally while it's in you know standard mode and you rack the slide, hammer stays back, right? But if you rack the slide in safe mode, watch this trigger and the hammer as you rack it. It decocks it again every single time. So let's see if I can do this. Uh, my other hand is my weak hand. I can't, but each time it puts the hammer back down and decocks it for you. So I thought that was super interesting. And now the trigger, my favorite thing about the gun. Oh, actually, I should back up. Rotating barrel. So sorry. That's why we're here. The rotating barrel. Normally, the Browning styles, the, the barrel tilt, uh, slides back and tilts down to get the next round. This one just slides back and rotates to pick up the next round. And hopefully, I can do this slow enough that it's not too painful to see. But hopefully, I can see that barrel rotate there as it moves backwards, as the slide moves back. As it rotates, it loads the next round. And you can see that when we take the firearm apart. So I just love, love, love that design. I can't wait to see how it does, you know, what it does to recoil. But so here's the next thing, the trigger. Double action, single action. I'll tell you in double action, uh, it's a heavy, it's, it's on safe. <laughs> in double action, it's a heavy trigger pull, but not as heavy as you would expect or you're used to. This in double action, measured with my fancy lineman trigger gauge, I won't pain you watching me take measurements, uh, measure pretty consistently at eight pounds. Now, eight pounds seems like a lot, maybe, but I have other double action firearms that gets this, that are, you know, 10 to 11 pounds for double action. Now, single action measured pretty consistently at three and a half pounds. So if you, oh, look at the reset in a second, because that's the best part. But just pull back here, there's the wall, boom, three and a half pounds. And again, it's a smooth three and a half pounds. I don't, if it were any lighter, I'd be scared of it, I think. There's the reset. So let's look at that reset again. The reset is magic. So reset is there, that's it. And then instantly on, no take up. It's just a fantastic trigger. Boom, and there it goes. So with this rotating barrel system and this incredibly short reset, I'm expecting to have this to be a really fast shooter that stays on target really well. Super excited about that. So last, let's look at the internals. Again, I've not taken this down before, so I've seen pictures of it, but I believe you just pull these tabs down on each side and push the slide forward. Maybe I'll pull back slightly and pull the tab forward. Bear with me. We're learning together, or I'm learning with you. You probably already know. There it goes. So the slide just comes right off the front. I'll put that aside for now. Inside here, looks like your standard polymer frame. Got your extractor. Got your metal inserts here that the slide rides on. But the cool thing is, there's your feed ramp. It's not on the barrel. Feed ramp is right there. And if you take a look at how the magazine seeds up in here, the magazine goes right behind the barrel now. And as it rotates, the bullets go straight into uh, the barrel as opposed to tilting down, causing, again, muzzle flip. So I am super excited for this design to see how it shoots. Uh, seems Again, I love the innovation behind it. Not that it's new innovation that happened you know, 20 years ago, uh, but I've just never seen a barrel without a feed ramp. The feed ramp is actually on the frame itself. Now inside the frame, you've got this cam system and a recoil spring. So come out like that. There's the cam and here's the plastic uh, a guide rod and capture recoil spring. They make a metal version of this as well uh, for increased reliability and also just weight uh, for um, muzzle control. So that's something I may add pretty soon. And then the barrel. And the barrel looks like it just slides right out. 
maybe. I'll put the unlocked position if I can. There it comes. So, interesting finish on the barrel. And I've never seen a barrel without a feed ramp before. You've got just this guy here as it rotates in, it picks the round up right here, I believe. So super interesting design. And inside the slide. Very nice machining from Beretta. So that's a super close up of the Beretta PX4 Storm full size. Um, I will definitely have some follow-up videos soon because I can't wait to shoot this guy to see how um, how it shoots. And hopefully I can get this back together on camera. Again, the pressure's on now. Uh, put this guy here. That locks in there. It's nice and easy. Uh, And I think we're back together. We are. So that was a close-up look at the Beretta PX4 Storm full-size. Uh, new toy. I'm going to put a lot of rounds through, and I'll come back with some follow-up videos on how the recoil works in this thing and how reliable it is. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy.